Hello everyone, my name is TL and I am a tutor from Kara Tutoring. Today I'm going to be covering the Passport to Advanced Math section and in the previous videos I covered the Heart of Algebra unit, the Problem Solving and Data Analysis unit, and in the next video I'll cover some additional topics that are on the SAT Map section um, but come from various topics throughout your high school career. So the Passport to Advanced unit has four big ideas, rewriting expressions, quadratics, and exponentials, rational equations and graphical behaviors, and analyzing equations in scenarios. So the last part will be similar to what we did in problem solving and data analysis. So if you're good at that, you should have no problem completing these questions. On the next page, I have a couple of questions that will test your knowledge of the Passport to Advanced Math unit. So feel free to pause the video and come back once you are finished. Also, if you are interested in receiving free tutoring from Care Tutoring, um, be sure to go in the link in the description below and sign up using the form. And let's begin. For a farming silo, the function f gives the grain level f of n to the nearest whole percent of capacity on the nth day of 2018, which of the following is the best interpretation of f of 50 is equal to 27. So in this case, what we need to do is figure out what this 50 replaces. So 50 replaces n, and n represents the nth day, or how many days into the year of 2018 we are at. However, a and b are just random 27 and 50 days into 2018, so those would be incorrect automatically. We need to look at the 50th and the 27th day. So these are the values that we're working with. So let's move on to c. c would be correct, uh, because n replaces, or 50 replaces n, and n represents the nth day of 2018, and that's equal to the whole percent of capacity, which is 27. So it's equal to 27 and 27 percent capacity. So C would be the correct answer. All right, so given the equation P of S is equal to 1 half kx squared, if the spring constant is halved and the elongation length is doubled, how does the potential energy change? So X is going to represent the length and K is going to represent the spring constant. If you don't know this equation already, this is going to be the potential energy for a spring. So if the spring constant is halved, this would be a direct relationship between the potential energy and k. You could uh, leave this one half out of there because that is not going to affect it. That's not the value that we're changing. We are only changing k. So if k is one half, p, p of s, p e of s will also be one half. However, if its elongation length is going to be doubled, um, x is squared. So in this case, we know that uh, the PE, uh, the potential energy, is going to increase by 4. So we have 4 times a half, and that's doubled. So the correct answer would be C. So to the graph to the right, T of X is represented. If T of X is equal to K, has 4 solutions, what is the value of K? So in order to find 4 solutions, what you need to do is um, find where, find a point at which the graph intersects the point four times and t of x is equal to k so we're looking for a y value that intersects four times and let's go down the list two only two times b is three that's only two times also one two times also and d negative two that is touched four times crossed four times one two three and four so d would be the correct answer if h of x is equal to x squared plus 3, and f of x is equal to h of x minus 9, what is f of 2? So the first thing that we would do here is we need to find h of 2, because f of 2 depends on h of 2. And we get 7. Now we plug h of 2 into f of x in order to find f of 2. So we get 7 minus 9, and that's equal to negative 2. That will be our final answer. The graph of which of the following functions in the xy plane has x intercepts at 3 and negative 8. So the first one is going to be incorrect because if we set this one equal to 0, we know that's going to be 3. So how you do this is you set x minus 3, the everything that's inside the parentheses, and you set that equal to 0. Then you want to move the 3 over to get x by itself, and you get 3. x is equal to 3. So that's one of our x-intercepts here. However, if you go for this one, um, x minus 8, you set that equal to 0, and you find for x, 
then you just get x is equal to 8, which is going to be incorrect because we have a negative 8. So a is incorrect. g of x is equal to x plus 8, x minus 3. So we already knew that x minus 3 was correct. That's what we did in the first problem, or the first answer choice. So if we set x plus 8 is equal to 0, and we subtracted that 8 over to find x by itself, we get that x is equal to negative 8 and x is equal to 3. So b would be actually the correct answer. And these are just going to have roots at x is equal to 3 and x minus 8, just like we did before, but they don't have both x-intercepts. Our researcher is trying to figure out the future population of a certain animal species. He estimates that the annual growth rate is 0.7%, and if the current population of the habitat is 20,000, which of the following expressions appropriately models the population of the habitat y years from now, according to the researcher's estimate? So this is going to deal with... Um, coming up with your own function in order to express, express the scenario. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to find the number of years, which is going to be rep represented by y, and we need to find the rate. So if the growth rate, um, note that it says growth instead of the k, so growth is going to be any value that's greater than 1, and we just convert this into a decimal. So in order to convert into a decimal, we have to move this to the left two times, so we have 1. 0 0.07 and another movement to the left would give us 0 0.007 for our growth rate. So our growth rate will be 0 0.007 and our rate will be 1 plus 0 0.007. So starting off with D, um, D is going to be incorrect because we have a growth rate. So growth only happens if the rate is going to be greater than 1. So in this case it's not, so this would represent a decay. So that's wrong. Uh, this is incorrect because you need to multiply the base by the rate in order to get the future population. And, and B is incorrect because you're multiplying the number of years before you actually had the rate. So in this case, you'll be multiplying 0 0.007 by Y first before you had the 1.007 growth rate. A would be the correct answer. So the first thing we need to do is rewrite this. So we know that rad radicals would represent a fractional exponent so in this case we have a cubic root so this bottom part would be x to the one third however since it's in the denominator it's going to be a negative exponent so it's going to be x to the negative one third and then we just multiply it by y so that's going to be b as our final answer what are all the possible solutions to x minus six is equal to six x minus nine Oh, square root, my bad. Um, so the first thing we need to do is eliminate the square root. So we square this side and this side also. So, the, so then we get x minus 6 squared is equal to 6x minus 9. And now we have x squared minus 12x plus 36 is equal to 6x minus 9. So then we subtract it over, set it equal to 0. x squared minus 18x plus 45 is equal to 0. And so we get 15 and 3 as roots. However, we need to check for uh, extra solutions because we have a square root. So the first thing we need to do is plug in 15. So 15 minus 6, that's 9. 6 times 15, that's 90. Minus 9, 81. Rad 81 is 9. 9 is equal to 9, and that's correct. So A is correct. B, if we plug it in, Negative 3 is equal to square root, um, and we know that a negative number cannot be equal to a square root in any case, unless we're talking about imaginary numbers, but in this case we're not, so A is going to be the final answer. Alright, so if x is a solution to the given equation, what is the value of x? So the first thing we're going to do is, since we're in a proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So we have x minus 4 times x minus 5 is equal to x plus 3 times x plus 4. And then we just distribute. And then we cancel out um, like terms. 6x, uh, negative 16x is equal to 8. x is equal to negative 1 half. And next, what are the solutions to x squared plus 5 is equal to 2x? So the first thing we need to do is make sure the quadratic is equal to 0. 
then we use the quadratic formula since we cannot factor this. So up top I have the quadratic formula listed and I plugged in the value. So if you don't know already, this first pretend there's a one there. Um, if there's no coefficient, just assume there's a one. So we have a, b, and c terms. And you just plug that into the quadratic equation and find the answer. So I plugged everything in, simplified, and we got a negative radical. So you could rewrite this as um, i. You could write, rewrite this as i. So if it's a perfect square, you could find the square root of it and put i next to it um, for negative radicals. And then it's all divided by 2. And then that simplifies to 1 plus 1 plus minus 2i. So that's going to be the final answer. Lastly, which of the following is equivalent to 8x to the fourth minus 4s to the second power? So the first thing we need to do is distribute. He distributes to this. So what I did was just multiply the 4 over and then multiply these two together. And the reason why this simplifies to this is we have this negative 4s term that gets multiplied with this, this x, x squared term. And we have this 4x squared term that gets multiplied with this s term. So those two, they actually cancel out. We'd have no middle term. We just have the uh, multiplication of the 4s and the s and the 4x and the x squared, uh, 4x squared times x squared. Now let's do the same for b and the rest of the answers. And that should be all the answers. So we get that the final answer is going to be B. So that's all I have for today. If you are interested in receiving free tutoring from Care Tutoring, uh, feel free to use the link in the description to sign up and have a good day.